Hello everyone. In this episode we will be making the interior room look nicer as well as allowing the player to choose a monster to take with him into battle. Hey guys, so uh, you may have noticed there's still an error uh, in our game from last part, part 8. In... Is it breed button? Yeah, so in OBJ breed button in the draw event on line 7 we just want to change that to GA colors not OBJ main okay and one other thing that I I really wanted to do is have a new event in OBJ main and it's going to be the destroy event and we're going to say uh, GA colors equals zero GA attacks equals zero GA stats equals zero GA storage equals zero um, a features equals zero just to uh, free up memory for any memory that these arrays are, are taking and also obj grid we need to say in the destroy event uh, ds grid destroy and ds grid uh, also battle manager there's quite a few in battle manager destroy event player a stats equals zero enemy a stats equals zero player a features equals zero enemy a features equals zero And let's just have a quick look for any more. We've done breed button. Child A features. So in OBJ breed button, destroy event, child A features equals zero. Do we have any more? Is it breed, breed box? Yeah, breed box. Uh, also, destroy event. A features equals zero. That should be most of them. Okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way because it's something I've been meaning to do for a long time now. And I always forget. And then there's never a good time to put it in at the end of a video. So this is uh, why we're doing it now. The first thing I want to work on is the interior for the home. Uh, you'll notice that our first two rooms are 1280 by 960. So just to make everything um, work better, uh, or you know, in terms of having the player correct character move in all three rooms, that kind of thing, um, I've changed the size of our. Uh, storage room RM home interior to 1280 by 960 and I've also made a sprite for the interior I'm just going to drag this into the background layer there we go uh, one thing you may need to do is uh, make the sprite the same size as the room and then whatever uh, just just fill the background with black or if you're a bit more artistic than me, uh, you know, some flowers or something like that, I don't know. 
and we also want to have a teleport as well. So copy OBJ transport exterior. So right click duplicate. Uh, we're going to rename it to interior to exterior. Uh, create event is fine. Step event. Room go to RM home exterior. That's what we want. So now we've made the object. Go back to RM home interior. Drag our new object and put it into the room. Uh, make sure you click on the instance layer first. Otherwise you'll get the same error that I just did. Uh, we also want uh, an OBJ player in there. Just to move around. Put him on there. Uh, at the moment uh, the player is going to be able to walk on these lower walls uh, which isn't the effect that I want but um, in the future when, when we get to the polish stage uh, we'll just have some kind of a separate object um, that maybe goes transparent when the player walks near the wall so you can see the player some, something uh, just simple like that but uh, it'll still have a nice effect let's just test everything now make sure it's working Okay, um, the only other change for now that I want to make with this room is maybe move these buttons a bit closer together, move them up so it's easier to see and to use. I mean, eventually I'm hoping to have some kind of a uh, nice looking artwork where we the monsters aren't in just uh, aren't in squares they're in an actual like RPG style cell or some kind of freezer just something like that or, or like a, a jail cell I don't know and you can click on them individually and then they'll appear in the breed boxes that will be a lot cooler so I want to move these two buttons up by about 64 pixels uh, and bring the boxes in by about 128. I'm not going to close the game just yet, just so I can use it as a reference. So OBJ storage is where we are creating and placing these instances. Let's have a quick look in the create event. B box one, so it's going to make it uh, minus one sixty. Um, breed button. Minus sixty four again. And for B boxes, I want them to be closer together. And we'll say, let's have a quick look. One, two, three. So maybe three, three sprite widths of this closer in together. Uh, B box one. So brackets three times this and two X. Uh, plus brackets three times this. Let's just run the game again. See how this looks. Ah, oh, that's better. I, I like that. that. That's all right. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of this tutorial, which is taking a monster with you into the wild one that you've chosen or, or maybe created yourself okay guys so the next thing we're going to need is a new object we're going to call it obj player monster 
and give it the sprite for the breed box. And we're actually going to copy all of the events so you just right click all the event all the events then copy then right right click and paste probably should have just, just made it made a duplicate object would have been faster so you should end up with an object like this create event destroy event and draw event and this is our third box that's going to hold our play monster in storage so you know what monster you're taking um, next thing to do is to create that box so in obj storage create event down the bottom create player can't type monster box uh, plmon x equals room width divided by 2 plmon y equals 3 times sprite height and player monster equals instance create uh, depth plmon x plmon y zero obj player monster and the last line of code for this will be player monster dot num equals three so when we press press three we want this box to be highlighted one thing we didn't do before is in obj main the step event we want to copy all this code and then delete the event from obj main and we'll, we want to move it to obj storage because all the, the code for storage and stuff is should be inside this object now so let's put some comments uh, get player input and copy one of these if keyboard check pressed 3 selected box equals 3 okay and still in the step event where it says if GA storage step count is greater than minus 1 we want to say with obj pl player monster and then copy this code Okay, let's just uh, run the game, make sure this works. Let's press 3 and choose the guy with horns. Okay, cool. Okay. Now our player monster object is not persistent and we do need this data to travel between rooms rather than making this new object persistent we already have obj main is our persistent object and it already conveniently has an array ready for, for storing data in which isn't being used so we're gonna actually uh, transfer the information into this array so back to obj storage step event uh, with obj player monster if num equals this inside here it actually will do it here um, obj main dot a feature features i and then copy this okay and as you noticed when we go in and out of the room um, the 
the new object d didn't store, didn't save the data. So inside player monster, or should we do inside OBJ storage, create event, let's have a look. Yeah, we can do it inside OBJ play monster in the create event rather than, than having uh, SCR reset a features, we're going to say uh, for var i equals zero, i is less than global dot a feature size, i plus plus a features i equals obj main dot a features i. So whatever information is stored inside obj main's array should always be inside this one now. Uh, one bug that I didn't notice from last time was inside, is it this one? In it arrays? No. Um, battle manager? J stats. Yeah, it should be J stats, I think. Oh. oh, there it is. Uh, so, inside SCR create monsters, it says uh, GA storage HI equals I random three, which should be two. I, I had a brain fart. I was thinking there was three of each type. But yeah, so this is why this is why we should always use uh, variables. So uh, f um, total images equals uh, sprite get number SPR faces, and this will give us how many images are in uh, the, the SPR faces. So instead of I random three, we want total images minus one. And we want, instead of six, we want global dot a feature size. Because if we ever change the size of these arrays, is going to mess our code up um, unless you have it like this. So this is why, and I still I still get lazy from time to time. I still you know just type the numbers because I think oh it's fine. But th this this is how bugs are created because we didn't do it properly the first time. Okay, so uh, we have saved our data in OBJ main. So the next thing we need to do is in OBJ spawn battles in the create event, we're just going to read the information from OBJ main here. So we don't need to change any of the other code. So now if I run the game, this should all be working. So we'll take the red guy for a spin. Okay, cool. So Everything's working as it was before. One thing that we haven't taken account for is if no no monster is inside the play monster slot, then we're obviously going to get some errors. So probably the best thing to get around this is 
maybe perform a check. So we'll do that inside uh, OBJ spawn battles. So we'll say if OBJ main dot a features i is greater than minus one. Else, a features i equals uh, so storage array g a storage zero i. So the first actually it might be empty, might not it? Um, we need to do a for loop for var i equals zero. No, we can't use i. Um, for var j equals zero, j is less than array height one d g a storage j plus plus. So we want to say if GA storage J I is greater than minus one, so if it's not empty, then copy this information. And then we want to break, so we don't want to go through the rest of GA storage, we just want to break there. So let's put some comments. So, um, if there's a monster in OBJ mains, then use that. Else, check storage and use first available monster. Um, if the player doesn't have any monsters at all in storage, then we're going to be going to be in trouble. But uh, for now, <laughs> as always, for now, uh, this should be okay. Features. All right. Is this going to work? Let me check this. No, this this is going to be a bit silly. This we need to check before. So might be easy just to type the whole thing again but I'm sure I can salvage this so if yeah we're gonna retype it so if there is monster slot in OBG McBain then they do that so if there is a monster slot in OBJ mains array, then use that else uh, for far j equals zero, j is less than array length ga storage j plus plus. So we'll, we're going to loop through the whole. A GA storage array to find the first available one. So if GA storage G 
j0 is greater than minus 1. Then a features. Oh, we need a for loop for var k equals zero. K is less than global dot a features size k plus plus. E features k equals ga storage and we want j because this is the one that's not empty and then k And after we have copied the information, we want to then break from this for loop. Check. That looks more like it. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's change this six to uh, global dot a feature size. We should always always be using these wherever wherever we need to, just to prevent further bugs down the line. So let's run the game and this time we're not going to have a monster selected. We're just going to walk into the adventure area. So create to zero line 10. Oh, my bad. So, because we haven't declared i, it's giving us an error because I copied and pasted it again. That's usually the source of errors for me copy, paste, or typing mistakes. Okay, cool. So even if our player forgets to choose a monster, he's still going to be able to have one to fight with. Alright, so I'm going to leave it there for now. And I shall think of something awesome for next time. Bye for now, guys.